Now with Dave Brown presents Road to the Paralympics. Co-host Alex Smythe sits down with para-athlete Noah Vucic, para-athletics long jumper. Noah, thank you so much for chatting with me today. Thank you for having me. <laughs> How would you describe your sport for someone who is not familiar? Yeah, um, I mean, obviously I do para-athletics and track and field and the sport class that I partake in is the T20 intellectual impairment sport classification. And um, my impairment, it's not actually a physical impairment like someone with a physical disability, it's an intellectual one. So basically that means my ability to understand and process some information um, in some areas of life is slightly reduced. Um, and so there's a class in the Paralympic Games for athletes who basically brain struggle to understand and process some information. And, and talk a bit about the, the long jump uh, uh, specifically. Like, uh, how would you describe the kind of the process of going through a long jump? Yeah, so I mean, there's a lot of different phases that happen uh, in a long jump. I mean, I have a 42 meter run up. So um, I start way back at, the, at my mark and then I drive out. To, like, so I make my first six steps kind of like bounding. And then I start picking up a little bit of speed. And then I really get up nice and tall. And then that's as I start getting closer to the board, my steps get really fast. And then ideally, I want to hit the board as best as I can. It really take off, get as much height as possible, shift my hips forward and hang as long as I can and really stretch out and uh, hope to be happy with what the result is when I get out of the pit. <laughs> I mean, a, the, you've set a Canadian record, so you got to be pretty <laughs> happy with some of those results. What, what was that feeling like when you found out, oh, your jump was a new Canadian record? Yeah, particularly in Paris last year at the World Para Championship. I mean, I was going in there really hoping to like get a personal best, jump kind of around 725 because that's what I kind of thought it was going to take to like be top three or top four and open up a male qualifying spot. But um, to do it at 9 a.m. in the morning, which I'm not really a morning person, that also made it even more special in that sense that I just had my furthest jump typically when I don't typically like even getting out of bed. So uh, it was so exciting, so special. I was just jumping up and down afterwards and me and my coach were so happy and we were pretty confident that that was going to hold up to get amongst top four. And then we ended up with the silver medal afterwards. So it's pretty cool. And your your jumps also qualified, uh, led to a qualification spot for Paris. Like, what does that mean to know? Is like, okay, there's a spot in Paris lock because of uh, your hard work. Oh, it's a big, um, it's a big, great feeling. I mean, this year I get to, um, I don't have to go to the World Championship in Kobe, Japan in May because I've already like basically qualified. So I can really just focus on training and working hard on and focus on the things I really need to work on. And so by the Paralympic Games, I will go in there, fit healthy and fresh and really try and air it out for a gold medal next time. <laughs> and, and what are your hopes for, for Paris? Yeah, so I definitely, I definitely want to jump 15 centimeters further. I want to jump closer to around 750. And if I can do that, then that could potentially really challenge for that uh, gold medal. I mean, obviously any medal and just making the Paralympic team is still huge regardless, but uh, definitely being amongst those medals and that's like one of the best of the best medals I could get. It's really just winding up on that podium afterwards. You have mentioned the fact that you want to not only uh, be an athlete, but you also want to be an ambassador uh, mm -hmm. for folks with intellectual disabilities. Why mm -hmm. is that important to you to take on that side of things as well? Yeah, absolutely. I think because people with intellectual disabilities, sports not really that encouraged. Like, I mean, growing up throughout school, I mean, typically what people with uh, intellectual disabilities do is they graduate and they go to like a, a work placement program and it's like, you know, try and get a job in a grocery store or something like that. But I want to kind of bring more awareness throughout Canada that, hey, this is a class in the Paralympics for athletes with intellectual disabilities. And they can be like, okay, well, Noah was the first one who did it. He was you know, potentially a Paralympic medalist. So you know what? I want to work hard and get involved with that because if, if, I want to be a Paralympian. So that's kind of the biggest awareness I want to bring from Paris 2024 right up until the end of my career in LA 2028. So you've already uh, set yourself as an end date. You, you want to do uh, the two Paralympics and, and that's it then? Yeah, I mean, I guess 20, 28 is kind of when long jumpers are kind of in their prime. So like right now I'm 23, um, you know, but I still got a lot of work to do in terms of, you know, muscle maturity, getting stronger, getting faster. But typically jumpers are like late 20s to maybe even early 30s. I mean, I think my coach did say once like, you know, going till even 32 could potentially be possible, possible if I stayed like healthy and fit. But definitely 2024 and 2028 for sure. They're like the big ones. <laughs> and, and what is it about uh, para-athletics and, and doing the long jump that appeals to you so much? Yeah, I mean, well, ever since my mom adopted me from Haiti, I've always been naturally just a born jumper. Because um, they're like, I used to do some 400 running, in which, like, I like the four and all, but I love to jump. Like, jumping was, that's just what really captivated me. I mean, even in 2018, when I kind of first was getting into track, I mean, 
I was jumping over garbage cans in high school, which I definitely should not have been doing. So the teacher's like, okay, no, you can't jump over garbage cans, but track's starting, so why don't you join the track team? And my dad buys me these uh, cheap uh, distance running spikes. And then uh, I think I had like a 20 foot jump that day at city championships. And then I'm like, okay, like I could actually be good at this. So just, I think with loving to jump and having the passion for it, and then slowly finding out about the parasport and the intellectual impairment being like, okay, you know, maybe five years from now I could be a Paralympian. What does it mean to you to be able to represent Canada, put that maple leaf on your chest and, and uh, go and compete on the international stage for Canada? Absolutely. I mean, that's, that's just the biggest honor any athlete could like hope for because, I mean, when I compete for Canada, I'm not just doing this for me. I'm doing it for like my family, my friends, my parents, basically everyone who is in my corner supporting me and then ultimately doing this for Canada because I have the big maple leaf on my chest. So, you know, it's, it's just such an honor and Paris is going to be so exciting this year, especially with fans being back in the stands. And I think they're going to have like the Canadian house where, you know, family and friends will be watching and stuff like that. So, you know, just knowing that when I get on that runway, I'm like doing this for all of these guys. Like it's obviously track is an individual sport, so you are doing it for you, but doing it for others just makes it so much more special. And bringing it more uh, in, in focus in terms of when you are going to walk out that first time and you're going to hear your name called at mm -hmm. the Paralympics, what's going to be going through your head? What are you going to be feeling when that first happens? Yeah, I mean, well, I'll probably be feeling probably a few emotions. I mean, obviously, everyone's a little bit nervous before they compete, but then there's going to be also, I'll be feeling really excited. I'll be feeling really energetic and like, and there's going to be fans in the stands. So I'm just going to be like, okay, let's go. Like, this is what we've been working towards for the last five years. Here it is. Now's my moment. Let's do it kind of thing. <laughs> and, and lastly, like, a lot of these uh, uh, track events and, and, and uh, para-athletic events, they can sometimes be called slow progress sports. You mm -hmm. know, it, it, it can take a lot of work to get kind of very small nominal gains. How do you continue to build and, and kind of get better and grow within your sport? Yeah, absolutely. It's just, I think, I think the biggest thing for me ultimately this year is actually just learning patience. I mean, even in my long jumps um, last year, I was kind of rushing some of the phases. Um, so just really just working on being patient, going back to the drawing board, you know, taking, you know, the mistakes and the failures that I had in the past and using those opportunities to grow. And even as I like start doing some more public speaking with the, like I was speaking at some schools now and talking more about the intellectual impairment, I'm kind of taking those opportunities to kind of build the awareness and going back and be like, well, what can I work on next time that I didn't say to say it the next time to spread the word out and um, just continue to build the sport and encourage others. Noah, thank you so much. Thank you. Now with Dave Brown, weekdays at 9 a.m. Eastern on AMI-tv. Watch highlights, now streaming on AMI+. Plus. Do you want to dive into more conversations like this? Watch Now with Dave Brown, weekdays at 9 a.m. Eastern on AMI-tv or download the podcasts wherever you listen.